I have created a folder in here. Let me just go to the drive where I have put uh, assignment three, rethinking merge community, uh, site investigation. Okay, so everybody should have access to this. If somehow you don't have access to this, let me know. But it's a shared folder where I put uh, photography that I took of the site when I went and site maps that we're gonna use for the next portion of the assignment. So for deadline two, uh, what I'm really asking you to do here, and this is in an in individual manner, okay? You're more than welcome to work in groups. I don't mind that, but at the end of the day, it's gonna be you that has to do site plan and all the drawings and the model that's required. But if you wanna share with your you know, classmates some information or some measurements or some CAD or however you do it, just make sure that you have a file that we can work on when you come back from screen break. So inside of sitemaps, I've included some PDFs that come straight from the city and I've included some photography, some aerial photography to give you a sense uh, of how the site location has changed from 2001 to 2017. And so I kind of want to go through this really quick so you're able to see our site is this whole corner lot here. I'm talking about lot four, lot five, lot six, and lot eight, okay? And so you're more than welcome to draft this in Rhino, which I highly recommend since you guys are doing the grasshopper class with Natasha, you probably could, could knock this out rather quickly at this point. Um, and if you don't feel comfortable with that and you wanna do CAD, do CAD. But the PDF is here, you can download it and use as an underlay, or you can start from scratch. I wanna just show you how to read this so you understand the dimensions of the site. So what this is telling us here, this 60, that's all in feet. So from here to here, this stretch is 60 feet. From here to here, this stretch is 55 feet. And then it has like a um, quotation mark. That means that this is 55, this is 55, and this is 55. And same thing goes down here, 55, 55, 55. From this corner to this corner, this whole stretch is 148. Question. Go, um, Joe. What's up? So does that change how the address works? What do you mean? Like if there's each lot, do they have like their own address? Okay. So the one that you have an address to is actually this number four. This is where the actual market that existing building is sitting right now. This whole thing doesn't have an address because it's been, when you see something like this, that means it's been lot tied. So somebody bought 2913 South Broadway and then they did a lot tie for all of these. And maybe even including that one because I think that one extends a little bit that way, but only to this portion. This site map for the existing site should actually include from the dash line down, over, and up. And this is actually our site here. I was just looking at those aerial views from back in the day from 2001. And that's our whole, that's our whole site. So it looks like it's 20 feet above or beyond that lot eight. And to put in reference what the market is doing, the market is doing something like that, right? That existing building is something like that. That 20 foot mark that I was just showing is from this line to this line. So using this drawing, you should have pretty good information uh, for doing the site plan. And I would say for the perimeter, I want you guys to have Griffin Avenue, okay? So the width of Griffin Avenue, which it looks like to be 100 and 100 for Broadway as well, 100 feet and give us a site plan that has this other start of the next block. Just the way it's, it's drawn on this PDF. What do I mean by that? I want, you to, I want you to also include that portion and the portion that's here and the portion that's here, this one and this one in your drawing. Because in your model, I want you to also include it. Okay, because I want us to be able to have the site condition, that corner condition, uh, a little bit more accurate than just a flat site. Okay, because there's 
there's things that are surrounding the actual building. You don't have to subdivide the lots in your drawing, but you have to do, you have to have some kind of reference um, when I'm asking to mask these out, uh, where they belong. For example, this building, the one adjacent to the existing market, I want you guys to be able to mask that out in Rhino when you do your 3D model, the contextual model. So if you don't want to do the CAD like subdivided lot by lot, like three, two, one, that's okay. But I want you to be able to know that there is this building here that you're going to have to make a massing for. And it's going to go in that lot next door, if that makes sense. And I'm providing you the satellite maps. So you're able to kind of get the contextual imagery in the immediate uh, adjacencies to the site. And so you're able to kind of also gauge heights of those buildings based on Google Maps and stuff like that. Um, I know everybody has a different way of drawing, a different way of drafting and doing things. My recommendation to do this kind of fast would be do an underlay, scale that drawing, go for it, trace it out, underlay the first satellite image, and you'll get some contextual information and do that for the rest of the images until you have a nicely layered um, contextual site plan and then move it into a Rhino situation. And you can use, for example, Google um, Earth or Google Maps um, drop pen view. So you're able to also start modeling the heights for these existing buildings. You know, use this to your advantage and however you need to. For, for those of you that are on the G drive, can you confirm in the photos folder, there should be a subfolder titled Liliana. Yeah, it's there. And yes, there's it. about 20 photos that are gonna come on there. Okay. If you have photos of the site, or if you have anything that you wanna share with the group, this is where to put it. And the only thing that I request of you is to please put it in your corresponding folder. So the way that I did it was like photos, Liliana, my stuff, right? So I would ask you to do the same for a site investigation photography or anything like that that you want to share. Just create a your name folder and then drop it in there. And so when folks are knowing like, oh, hey, I'm using this photo, they can credit the source that it was you and or you can go ahead and do a Google Doc in there and just say, these photos are not my own and these are the, the sources. Okay, so... What's required, right? What's happening here? Okay, uh, my hopes and goals for everybody is that when you come back from spring break, you're well rested and like super amped about getting the design going for this. There's nothing due while you're off on spring break next week. However, the Wednesday when you return, we're gonna have our first deadline that's gonna have to do with programming and small diagrammatic layouts of the program um, on the site plan and existing modeling. So I'm hoping to see 2D drawings of the site, uh, both a site plan and a floor plan with the existing building. Our interventions and our solutions are gonna use the existing building. And some of you did killer, killer drawings for the Schindler House. Uh, go back to that experience and all the things that you put into that site plan and all the things that you put into those floor plans put them in here. Yes, it's a little subjective on what's going on inside that market. For the sake of this exercise, we're going to assume it's an empty building and it's you're just going to do a shell of a building. Our solution is going to be, or our intervention is going to be to work with that existing building. So if you just draw the placement of that existing market, you give us a shell to that existing market, and then we'll go from there and we'll kind of create different interventions for it. Uh, for the 3D modeling aspect, um, I want to see some contextual massing around the area. So the building that's right next door to us, that next door site should be in there. Um, mass out a few of the houses that are in that area. And the reason being is when we start to design, it's going to be really important to understand the different heights of the residential sector and the commercial sector that's happening on Broadway. Okay, so make sure that you're able to model um, contextually and also model the existing building okay to as accurate as you can make it and there's a couple of several heights to that building right so make sure that you check out those photos that I posted that 
um, those 20 picks kind of go through a good, um, uh, how do I say, perimeter view of the existing site. And, you know, be mindful, look at the proportions, look at the different ratios, okay? You did that already for the Schindler house, so you should be able to do this kind of a little quicker for the project. Are we limited to the information that you provided us? No, not at all. I'm just providing you guys some information to start with. And if you have more information, please feel free to use it. If you have more information that you want to provide for the group, please feel free to upload it. Okay. Um, I'm just giving you guys some information because I had the ability to go to the site. This was like pre-pandemic. I want to make sure that I'm at least providing you guys with something to go off of for those that cannot go in person. Um, and by any means, I'm not telling you to go in person. If you do, you're traveling at your own risk. Uh, um, so just take the info that's there if it's useful for you. And I want to see some beautiful drawings, some nice modeling, so we can tackle some design moves when you come back. This tables the discussion for the second part of the assignment, which is drawing and modeling existing conditions. If you have any questions on what's happening, um, how to do whatever you're doing, just reach out and we can go from there. Have a great spring break. Take you care do. of yourselves. Make sure you eat great, do good fun stuff. Maybe don't do any homework or design for a little bit and then come back to it so you're excited again.